What do you think? I think we're dead meat. Real dead meat. You're dead meat! Go ahead and laugh, you guys. If I ever find a little bastard of business, a dead meat. Welcome to the Dead Meat Podcast, an extension of the YouTube channel Dead Meat. I'm James. I'm Chelsea, and we're engaged, and we like to get scared together. <laughs> Hi. Hi. Uh, thanks for coming back after we took a week off. Yeah, you know, shit's crazy out there. It is crazy. Uh, we we stood up in a friend's wedding last weekend. It was last Friday, which is probably the last the possible last day they could have gotten married. to get married. Good thing they did it. Holy shit. Fingers crossed for us. If you're listening to this in the future, uh, it's coronavirus right now. Oh, sure. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, I don't think people are going to forget this one. No, 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 no. <laughs> but just for some context. Um, but also lots of outdoor activities during our, our friend's wedding. And I have very bad allergies to everything outside. It's You've why been I, sick for a week. It's why I don't like camping and hiking yeah. and stuff because I just always feel like shit after. So I've just had hay fever all week, but not at, which is not a fee. I don't know why it's, it's called not, that, yeah. but I've been I've been sick all week. So that's why I sound you missed half of elimination chamber. You just had to... No, I needed to sleep. So if there's any weird edits in the video, it's because I'm literally cutting around me coughing because it's gross and no one wants to see it. Yeah. And I'm going to be, I got my tea, I got throat coat. Mm-hmm. I love this stuff. Great. But, uh, so James is going to do a lot of talking in this episode because I sound horrible. That's okay. So thank there... you for, for dealing with me. If there were ever a podcast where I was prepared to talk a lot it's this one. Yeah, because this week is the Super Booze Day bow, 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 bow. election showdown. We're okay, so it's it's also primary season on top of coronavirus season. That's right. It's wild um, out there. We're still uh, having votes coming up this week. It's kind of nuts. <laughs> what are we doing? Uh, <laughs> but I thought, you know, real primaries are stressful. Let's have our own horror primary. I think we need to form our own horror party and send our favorite horror villain to the White House. That's right. Win the presidency. We can do it. We can take America back. Are we... So uh, So this is a primary that we're looking at with horror movie characters. Yeah. And are they just uh, going up against generic candidate in the race? Or are I, they going up against our current president, Donald I kinda Trump? I kind of want to pit him against Trump. Okay. Because I think y- that's... You give me the info. I think that's I'll... fun. I think that's more fun than kind of vague, okay. you know, specific we can president. Be spe- we can be specific? Okay, that's fine. Because then I think we really have to zero in on candidate strengths and weaknesses Definitely. against Trump. Yeah. So. Uh, so, yeah, obviously, we're this is going to... Uh, the the real-life primaries are going to inform what I say and spin. Basically, my job in this podcast is to look at these results, which were voted on. How many voters did we have? About 1,800. 1,800 of you. I think that's more than a lot of polls. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Depending but polls on don't what kind necessarily of poll, yeah. need that. Ma- anyway, we had 1,800 little meaties vote in. My job today is to spin these results yes. and tell you. Spin room. We're in the spin room. We're the spin room, and we're also going to be the super delegates because we're going to pick who the candidate is. So, like, whoever, whatever you guys voted for, or we can override that and pick who we want. Okay. Although, we- although just a note, historically, that's never happened. Yeah. Okay. But technically, it can. It could. So, we will be serving those roles. And also, by spin room, I mean, there'll be a little bit of spin, but I'm probably going to take mostly a Nate Silver approach to this and mm-hmm. really dig down into the demographics, look at the numbers, and tell you what we're looking at here. Then we can kind of spin it. Yeah. But, uh, yeah, obviously, the real life primary that's going on right now is going to inform my commentary on this although uh, I don't think we'll be advocating for or against any specific candidate you probably know our feelings anyway but <laughs> everyone can this listen is, to this podcast that's why this is the horror party exactly everyone can listen to this podcast and have a good time we're, we're forming a third party yeah, that's we, right time for a third party I think we can all agree that that'd be fun oh uh, yeah <laughs> So I guess, where do we want to start results? Well, we should because... look at the overall results because, okay. okay. Man, you are into this. I love it. Fuck yeah, I am. Okay. Uh, yeah. For those of you don't, who don't know, I I mean, we're both extremely politically involved and active. Yeah. Don't follow me on Twitter if you don't want that shit. Yeah, maybe not. But uh, my, <laughs> my tendency uh, is to go towards the 538 model of d- being very data driven. So the fact that we have uh, 26 slides of graphs in front of me, I'm just... 
uh, I'm convulsing with joy right yeah. now. This is a lot of fun. I worked very hard on this. Yes. And also, by the way, I upgraded my account on the survey <laughs> website I used so that I could see all the results. Because if you just use the free account, it limits how many you can see. So I could only see like 75. And I'm like, that's not useful. There's like thousands of people that are going to vote on this. So I, I think I misunderstood the terms of the upgrade. And I think I did the one where it's like, if you own a business if you are a national campaign <laughs> yeah uh i got charged 1500 bucks on accident yeah got most of it refunded but like that was not a fun charge to see on no. our brand new business account yeah <laughs> it was like business. Hey, Johan, i know that now we have a business account but yeah. uh <laughs> so i did end up paying a little bit your profligate spending uh, is gonna sink dead I meat know. <laughs> It was worth it for all these results. <laughs> it's it's a lot of nice bar graphs that I'm looking at here. Yeah. Okay, so this primary has concluded. All the voting has been done. We have the results state by state, demographic by demographic, and the results uh This is the convention right now. This is okay. It's literally the two of us. This is gonna be what the DNC is gonna be like because everyone's got coronavirus. It's also <laughs> just gonna just be the two of us. a couple dudes just <laughs> sitting around a table. So how many candidates did we have here? I see six 16. nine. We have sixteen. I don't are all 16 on this graph is it 16 i thought i put 16 uh it looks One, more two, like three, four, 14 five. oh yeah i knew it was an even number okay yeah we have 14 candidates which is not the most candidates we've had in primary races i believe uh 2016's republican primary had uh, 16 candidates to begin with and that this sounds year's... right because they had the the kids table the, debates, yeah. which we had this year too with the democrats but the republican primaries last time it was like two fully stacked primary debates of like two different sets of candidates they should have done that with the dems honestly they did one with the the dems no that that was randomly divided it wasn't kids t it wasn't divided by polling i numbers. see yeah, that which yeah that, yeah come on we don't need to see all the 20 candidates which were among the democrat primary uh in this one this year that mm -hmm. was wild but okay so we had 14 candidates that's a lot the votes were split but let's just look at the the real significant ones because I'm looking at six here that got like a sizable vote. Mm -hmm. Okay, so in sixth place we had Freddy Krueger with seven percent of the vote. Okay, uh, s fifth was my boy Herbert West with a eight point three. Uh, fifth or no fourth, I'm sorry, was Candyman with nine point six. No one's breaking double digits yet. However, in third place was Black Phillip from The Witch with 11%, okay? In second place was Red from Us with a 13%. And again, we're, we're splitting these votes a lot of ways, but I think that if we looked at these results, it, there is a clear winner. It is not off by just a couple of points because like I said, Red in second place had 13%. John Kramer had 19%. Now beating your next your runner up with by 6 points in a field of 14 candidates, that's solid. That is a significant John Kramer clearly has the votes here, okay? Mm -hmm. So that's what Does I'm seeing right here. Does he have a right plurality here. or a majority? It is a plurality. It's a Ma plurality. Majority you is explain? over. Yes, that's a good question. Uh, majority means over 50% of all voters. Clearly, no one has that. So a plurality is the most out of uh, any, I don't know, subgroup or whatever. He has the most that's not over 50%. So no one has a majority. And in fact, many presidential elections are uh, the winner does not have a majority of the votes uh in the country because of third parties. So a uh, presidential candidate usually wins with, I don't know, like 46% mm -hmm. of the vote. So technically it's a plurality and also it doesn't matter because the electoral college. Anyway, John Kramer with a resounding plurality of these votes. And that's why even though he has the plurality, we got to talk about the electoral college. Sure. That's why I put all, I have data for all the swing states. That's right. Because the, as uh, I don't know if the rules differ for the Republican party, for the Democrat party, if you uh, go into the convention with less than 50% plus one of the votes, a.k.a. you have a plurality, that's when a second round of voting can happen and then shit gets wild, yeah. okay? So since no one has a clear majority, you're right. That's why we are allowed to make that's the final decision. That's why we're decision. the super delegates. That's right. Okay, so let's dig into this a little bit more because you know what? John Kramer, when he was campaigning, I think he said something about we have a solid quarter 
at least of the votes. And you know, he fell a little short. He couldn't even crack 20. So that's going to make him look a little bit weak. And I'm sure that he's looking at some of these other candidates and wishing they had dropped out so their supporters could have gone to him, pushed him over the edge. Just didn't happen. I'm sorry, man. Uh, I bet Annie Wilkes, if she had dropped out, her 1.3% might have put him over it. You know? All right. So let's uh, let's also mention these other candidates, okay? Oh, yeah. Let's go through all the candidates that we have. Yeah. So aside from those top six that I said. Yeah, we got John Kramer. Mm -hmm. So uh, Sam from Trick or Treat Mm -hmm. with a 5.87%. Yep. Toby from Paranormal Activity with a 1.23%. Yeah. The... Maybe the, That's Tim, the, lowest. the Tim Ryan of this cycle. <laughs> oh, yeah. Was it or Palenti? Like the, or was that even this cycle? Who? Tim Palenti? That might have been 2016. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, yeah, no, Ryan sounds right. Yeah. That's a good or like one. like a Howard, Howard Schultz, I think, was polling better than... Oh, God. <laughs> I don't remember Howard. That Barely. seems like years ago. Yeah. Uh, Pinhead Hellraiser, 3.11%. Pinhead has some interesting info He does have on. some yeah. interesting yeah, yeah. Gra- bar graphs in here. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> The Babadook. I'm surprised the Babadook did not do better. Yeah, 2. with the 2.58. 8. Mm-hmm. Billy Loomis, 2.76. Wow. Chucky, 2.52. That's Thought also surprising. Better, yeah. The Jin from Wishmaster, 1.58. Wow. And he, 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 you know, he ran on giving everyone what they wanted, and I think people saw through him. I, yeah, I think yeah. people knew that once he gets elected, Their is this really his. what you want? <laughs> yeah. And all of his policies are weird. <laughs> we all turn into the snake people. It, no, it's uh, he offered universal health care, and then when he was elected, everyone was floating out in space and just died. Yeah. Because it was universal, universal health care. Yeah, mm-hmm. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, Annie Wilkes from Misery, 1.35. Mr. LaBelle from Ready or Not, 3.29%. Did a little better. And Beetlejuice, you know. 7.28%. Oh, yeah, Beetlejuice. Actually, oh, I'm sorry. I was mistaken in my roundup at the top. Oh, Beetlejuice shit. pulled in more votes than Freddy Krueger. Oh, shit. Which may be a bit of a surprise to you, but I, I have that some a, explanations yeah. that I can tell you I think later those on. two may have split some They seem some like votes. They, they I, were, I, think, I think Beetlejuice was maybe the spoiler candidate for Freddy Krueger. I, I think, think Freddy's... Well, wouldn't Freddy be the spoiler for Beetle? Beetle pulled in more votes just by a little bit. That's true. Yeah. So technically, but it looks like they're sharing votes. They're really the uh, the uh, 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 Buttigieg, Klobuchar yes. of this race. They're just sharing the same exact electorate, oh, but both of them hung in there. All right. I'm trying to think which one of them hates the other one more. Like oh, who's between... the who's the Pete and who's the the Amy of Beetlejuice and Freddy? Uh, uh, so you're saying that Amy hates Pete more, right? I think. Well, yeah, it's... I think I think she is like overflowing. I think for him. I think Freddy would be the Amy. Yeah, okay, sure. I, th- I think Beetlejuice is just a step more aloof and just doesn't care. I think he doesn't. He hasn't put in as much uh, time. Ma- well, no, he's been around for a long ass time. What year was Beetlejuice? Uh oh, like the movie? Yeah, eighties. No, that, later than that. Okay, so it was a late eighties because Freddie's been around 80s. since eighty four. Speaking of which, who has the most seniority? Out of all these candidates, because you know that matters to some people. Some people like to well, see. Well, are we talking what year their movie came out? Or are we talking their actual age? Because again, Beetlejuice has been around since. Yeah, but no, you got to go by how long their public service has been going sure, on. Sure, okay. You know, because you can't. You know, it's like the old uh, uh, shit. What's the other uh, Steyer? You know, people wouldn't say that he's a veteran in politics because even though he's an old guy, he just jumped into politics. Sure. So judging by their actual. Uh, uh, Civic duty. It um, might be Pinhead. Is is Hel- Pinhead's late eighties? Freddy oh, Krueger's eighty four. I think it might be Freddy. Jesus, Freddy, the elder statesman here. That's weird. Looks like it. Wow. All right. And then we got yeah. Newcomer- how you gonna be pissed at Beetlejuice? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> right. Throw all kinds of staplers at him. <laughs> uh, we got some real newcomers in here, like Mr. LaBelle. Uh, Black Phillip has been around for a election cycle, so he's he's got more name recognition, which is probably why he did so well. You know, L- Mr. LaBelle, if you run again next time, you may be able to bank off that now that people are more aware of you. you I, know? Yeah. I think this was a profile-raising campaign this year for, for LaBelle. Sure. Okay. Uh, and anyone else worth looking at? You know, we got Billy Loomis has been around for a while now. You know, he seemed like a fresh face when he came in. So maybe he's like a Cory Booker type of deal. When he came in, he was a bigger oh, deal yeah. and seems young. And he still has that youthful youthful spirit. But nowadays, just the, the culture has changed. The culture. And he seems like kind of 
a little bit of a weenie. A little bit. And he, you know, when he came out, he seemed uh, real fresh and new. But now, uh, since we've seen so many candidates like him, it's more like, are, are we sure we can trust you, Billy? Right. Billy Loomis? All right. So let's dig into this a little bit more with some demographics looking at this. I hope this is interesting to people because I'm having a great time already and we're not even like really looking at anything. Uh, So first breakdown that we have is by region. You divided this between the Midwest, Mm -hmm. which I'm assuming it's like Michigan, Ohio, Indiana. So is it just Rust Belt or are you extending it to like North Dakota and uh, Montana? Do you remember Um, what your division was? I think Midwest included the Dakotas. Okay. That makes sense for as far as these large uh, breakdowns that you have here. Because now then you have Northeast, yeah. which New England, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah, assuming yeah. New, York. New York and up. Uh, was Pennsylvania Midwest? Because Pennsylvania is a weird one. It's weird because it. I've Cause seen it included in both. Philly is, you know, East Coast. I think Pennsylvania was included in my... East Coast, my okay. Like northeast. It probably has more population there. Let's see. South. So is that Southeast? The yes, traditional that's South. Alabama. Bible Belt. Arkansas, Florida. Okay. So as far uh, everything east of Texas, <laughs> yes. right, and below the Mason Dixon. Okay. Southwest. Uh, I'm assuming that's looking at Texas, New Mexico, Arizona. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, does that include California? No, that's west. Oh, okay. Oh, so West is like West Coast. Is yeah. it just Oregon, Washington, Oregon, Washington and California. California? That's fair. Those are their own kind of place. Yeah. Okay. So those are the regional breakdowns. And overall, they mostly follow the same trends as uh, as the overall results. However, it looks like Red had a pretty strong showing in the Northeast. So she's doing good in the New England area. But just just as a note, John Kramer did win every single region. Yeah. There was no region where he was not the first place winner. Uh, but since Red was the second place winner overall, I think it's interesting that in the Southwest, Black Phillip actually overperformed and came in second to John. He beat out Red by just a little bit. And... Uh, I think we have some statewide The data. Southwest is weird because also Freddy Krueger did like visibly not as well in the Southwest as all the other regions. That's true. His his bar graph is, is much smaller. So, uh, well, you know what? Southwest might be... I, I think it's fair to say the Southwest probably has the highest percentage of uh, Latino voters. Mm-hmm. Is that right? And they tend to skew young. That demographic is a younger skewing demographic. Oh, younger voting block. So uh, there is actually some some significant age differences for Freddy Krueger. And because uh, I'll, I'll just mention them right now. When we get into the votes by age, we have uh, over 30 and under 30. Those are our divisions. There's a big difference for Freddy. Big difference because, and I think this is the case, the under 30 only went for uh, went for him by 6%. Over 30 went for him by twice that, 13%. I think if if you're under 30, you were born in the 90s. By the 90s, Freddy's a washed up guy. He's a joke of a fucking character. So you see Freddy and you're like, oh, that guy? He's not cool. He's never been cool. He's skateboarding around and playing video games trying to relate to the kids. That's bullshit. The over 30 crowd went for Freddy with 13%. Actually, the most. Freddy is the candidate of the, of the over, over 30, 30 voters. That's fascinating. He is the number He's one the candidate. He's the Joe Biden. Uh, well, I think Kramer's the Joe Biden, and I'll get into that in a little well, bit. But, but he has every yeah yeah exactly <laughs> so freddy just has the over 30 crowd and uh yeah i think that's because people remember that first movie those people are more apt to associate him with that 1984 him coming out and being scary still so sure. i think that that's why they like him uh let's see going back to the regional stuff any other results that really jump out to us No, because the regional ones, again, they all kind of came out to be pretty similar to the overall vote. So, like, besides some minor standout things, I don't know how interesting the regional votes are. Red did really well in the West. Uh, Where did us take place? Yeah, that was in California. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's her home state. That makes sense. She had a hometown advantage. Same with, I think, Friday did well in Ohio. Oh, Freddy. Oh, really? Yeah. Oh, fuck yes. That's amazing. Uh, But yeah, other than that, the regional differences aren't that distinct. The Midwest and the Southwest really split their votes among candidates, whereas the South uh, went more for red. And yeah. Okay. So moving on, we have the state by state 
results. And we didn't do all 50. What we did was look at the potential swing states in the general election to look at who might fare. Because, okay, because of the Electoral College, I'm sorry, the person who gets the most votes isn't necessarily the one who's going to be in the best position to win the general election. Because sadly, states like California, which will 100% go for the Democrat candidate, or states like, uh, I don't know, Alabama, which will 100% go for the Republican candidate, I'm sorry, in my opinion, their votes don't matter as much because no matter what, those states are going those ways. So it really falls it's a down. It's bad system. It's, a, it's not a great system, you know, uh, in my opinion. <laughs> it falls down to a few states that go back and forth every few elections, and those are really where you need to win the voters in order to win the electoral college votes and win the election. So what we have here for our swing states are Colorado, which trends blue, but is still a swing state. Florida, which trends pretty red. Uh, Iowa definitely trends red. Michigan trends blue, but it it, it really goes back and forth. Well, no, it only went uh, red for Trump, and then uh, went right back to blue in the midterm. So yeah, because it was uh, it, Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania were the three states that Trump won, which gave him the office. Had uh, Clinton right. won, she would have been the. If uh, any of these horror villains voted for NAFTA, then they're not going to win Michigan. Ooh, you know, uh, free trade is a, a big thing in the in the Midwest, and especially mm -hmm. the Rust Belt. So Minnesota used to be a blue wall, still barely hung on blue in 2016, but it's definitely a swing state. Nevada, um, I forget if that, that's blue. That's, yeah, that's, uh, leans blue. New Hampshire leans blue. North Carolina, that's a flippy boy. Yeah. That's a real, that's one of the two states that Obama won in, uh, 2008 and lost in 2012. Oh, interesting. I think, I think it was that in Indiana or did he win at Florida? I forget. I'm sorry. I'm trying to just do all this off the cuff. Uh, Ohio leans red more and more. Pennsylvania, that's a flippy boy. And Virginia, that's a flippy boy, but it's more and more blue now. Oh, and Wisconsin, that's a very important one. Mm -hmm. And that uh, kind of stayed red in the midterm, so that's an interesting one. Out of these states, all right, let's look at these. In Colorado, Kramer won that one, but uh, Candyman had a strong showing in Colorado. In fact, tied for second with red. Colorado tends to be a little bit more libertarian than anything else. Mm -hmm. They're uh, kind of laissez-faire about everything. And I could also see, I'm not sure if this is true, Colorado may be more environmentally focused. So Candyman's message of save the bees, because we have a bee problem mm -hmm. that might be going extinct, uh, that might have resonated with them. I think it's interesting to look at which candidates got no votes in Colorado. Ooh, Pinhead. Pinhead, Chucky, Chucky. and the Gin. Mm -hmm, zero kind votes. Of authoritarian uh, candidates, you know? <laughs> I don't know about Chuck. Chucky's a wild card. That's true. He's kind of a chaos candidate. Yeah, he's a, if, he's a chaos candidate. He might candidate. be an he's ultimate the... libertarian, honestly. <laughs> I, yeah, I can't tell if Chucky's more of a Ron Paul or a Tulsi Gabbard. Who the fuck <laughs> knows, man? He's wild. Uh, Florida, which again, big uh, swing state. Herbert West had a pretty good showing here. He came in, he tied for third with Black Phillip. First and second were the, you know, universal first and second, John Kramer in red. Uh, but Herbert West did pretty well in Florida, and I think actually that he does well with older voters, if I remember correctly. Black Phillip? Oh. No, Herbert, Herbert West. West oh, yes. Herbert West was the second place candidate among older voters. In fact, John Kramer, interestingly, now that I'm looking at it, the over 30 voters, he was in fifth. He was tied for fourth. Wow. But still cleaned up. Uh, the overall election. So that's interesting that John Kramer is maybe the oldest age-wise, at least of the human candidates. I, I think we have... Lucy is just straight up locking me in the video right now. But Kramer might actually be the perfect candidate to run against Trump because I'm seeing both qualities of Bernie Sanders and Joe Biden in him. He might be... The, the unity is the, John Kramer the, true the unity, unity candidate. candidate. Oh my god! Because clearly he does well with under thirty. <laughs> right. Uh, he got over twenty percent of the under thirty vote. Yeah. And the next place was red with less than fourteen. So he's doing solid there. And then I'll get into the other reasons why he's he's solid everywhere else. But we also have to consider too that the pool of people that we're pulling from here, these numbers, 
our demographics who are watching this and taking this poll are young. They, they are skew young. young. Do you know the breakdown between the over 30? No, and under I wish 30? I, I had the amount of which ages. Okay. Um, but that's going to affect every other poll. So like, you know, oh, he does really well in this, this, and this state, but he might only do well with young people there. Hmm. That's, so that's something to think about. If I had more time and better survey technology, I could have broken this down even more. But even <laughs> this took paid the forever. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yeah. So I think it's very interesting that perhaps the oldest human candidate, John Kramer, does not do as well with older voters over 30. Mm-hmm. That's a very Bernie type thing. Mm-hmm. He's like the old, oldest candidate, but he does the best with yeah. the youths. Yeah. But, but also you can really tell that our electorate here is very young yes because even though (laughs) even though john kramer doesn't do well with older voters he won florida that does not make sense (laughs) right yes because florida's population is very old. florida is probably the oldest state on average it's home to the largest retirement community in the world for sure oh in the world i think it might be maybe the villages okay Regardless, Florida's demographics, it's good to know that they're old and a lot of Cubans there, which is <laughs> a, right. uh, a demographic that actually tends to skew more conservative yes. uh, than other Latino groups. They're not a monolith. And also, I'm using Latino just because that is the term it's used. It's the language it, used in polling. Yeah, so I, don't, I'm, I apologize if that's less than specifically accurate. Anyway, moving on. Iowa. A big state uh, because it's the first in the nation caucuses. Yeah. And judging by the amount of votes we have here, I think we had a caucus on our hands. Dude, it looks like caucus results. It's yeah. so weird because, because it's, it's like a bunch of people got no votes. So they maybe, must not have been viable. I think they weren't viable candidates and mm-hmm. they realigned yeah. to other candidates. So it's I think Iowa was a ca- uh, caucus, which uh, enjoy that while it lasts. Probably, probably not getting that next time. But <laughs> uh, Red won the Iowa caucus. And traditionally, you know, based on 2020 and before, not imagining the future, this is the first in the nation state in the primary. So Red probably came in, had enthusiastic supporters, probably had all the tethered come in and rally people over to their group for the caucus. And they won that. And I bet she was banking on the momentum coming out of Iowa Mm -hmm. because it is a it is a decisive victory, almost a 10 point lead over John Kramer, who Mm -hmm. came in second. So this I imagine the media after Iowa was looking at this as like. Oh, red surprise candidate red, because based on the numbers we were seeing, I'm assuming Kramer was pulling well nationally, which is all you have before the first contest. So Kramer's ahead. He's up ahead uh, nationally. Iowa comes through and red destroys it in the caucus. So I'm sure the media was like, oh, what's going on? Also interesting is that in third place, there were three people tied in Iowa, Freddy Krueger, Candyman and Beetlejuice. What's interesting about them, they didn't fare so well overall. When everything was said and done, they were not in those positions in the race. They were further down. So Black Phillip here came in uh, barely barely registering any, any votes. And I bet after the media, he had to have a long talk with his campaign and decide if he wanted to move forward. Mm-hmm. And you know what? I'm glad he did because he, d- he did pretty well overall. Yeah. Really set himself up for another good run later on. But yes, interesting. Iowa uh, Red did well there. In Michigan... I'm very proud of this. Is it? This is such a weird one. I love like the Michigan results are fascinating. This one, it doesn't. I don't know how I can spin this one. Herbert West came in first. Yeah. For the Michigan primary, which is interesting because I feel so both of us being from Michigan, the candidates that do typically really well in Michigan, I associate with being very salt of the earth. Like rustic. Rust, yeah, Rust yeah. Belt, um, working class. Uh, so that's why 2016 it was kind of a surprise upset. Bernie Sanders beat Hillary Clinton in Michigan. Mm-hmm. Um, Joe Biden fared much better this time around. I think Joe Biden has more he has working appeal. class credentials than yeah. Hillary Uncle did. Joe. So it is very interesting that Herbert West, of all the candidates, won Michigan. Because I look at this list, and to me, he is the least... Man of the people, except for maybe Mr. LaBelle. Sure, Mr. LaBelle is an aristocrat. Mr. LaBelle is probably the the Tom Steyer here. 
or the yes. or the Bloomberg, but the he's, Bloomberg. he's polling more like Steyer. He's more fun than the Bloomberg. That's true. And Steyer was fun. I think so. Toby would be kind of a Bloomberg. <laughs> do you know what I mean? I'm not sure I do, but okay. I, it makes sense to me. <laughs> well, okay. No, there's another person here who is not that man of the people. Pinhead, I think, also has this okay, air of fair. aloofness about him. And uh, I think that actually pans out because if you look but he's at, at least about pleasures and isn't about like austerity and shit hmm sure sure all i'm gonna say is a little that, radical <laughs> very radical <laughs> yeah pinhead's best demographic were grad school graduates i love that shit that's so funny to me he he still came in like he tied for Fifth among them, but that was his best showing was with grad school graduates. I do like that he's more appealing to the intelligentsia. Yes, exactly. You know, that's so fucking funny. It's like you have to be up here to get the whole yeah, pleasure yeah. pain thing. Working class, like, or like, no, the people without high school degrees are looking at it like, no, he's tearing you apart with chains. Uh, like, right, what right, the right. fuck? <laughs> and yeah. <laughs> No, man, you don't you don't get it. There's a fine line. Uh, but I was surprised that Herbert West, looking at those education graphics, he did best for himself among those without a high school degree. That's really interesting. You really would have expected him to be the grad school candidate. But uh, no, he did 10, got 10 points with no high school degree. I mean, he's the candidate most likely to derail your grad school career as shown by his relationship <laughs> with his roommate. Yeah, poor so, Dan. Yeah. Okay. Uh Yeah, so that was Michigan, which, uh, you know what I think explains Herbert West's win there, though? It's because I campaigned for him. Herbert West is is my candidate of choice. Oh, okay. I'm I'm from Michigan, so I think maybe I have a little bit of pull. Because we don't know who the super delegates are, right? That's the whole thing. Or do we know? No, we know. Yeah. Are they allowed to campaign for candidates? Because that seems weird. Yeah. It seems like that shouldn't be. Well, in this election, I campaigned. <laughs> We're the horror party. There's not yeah, standard. Okay. We could be crooked as fuck. It's the horror villain party. Yeah, half our candidates have murdered people. More than half. Pretty oh, much I, all of them. I think all of them except... Did Beetlejuice ever kill anyone? Probably. Yeah, Beetlejuice is... If he hasn't killed anyone, he tried to marry a teenager. Oh, that's gonna be... That's not good. And then John Kramer technically hasn't killed anyone. That No, he... Uh, he rigged the shotgun trap that killed that cop and there was no test or anything. That guy just got, although I guess, mm. uh, stand your ground. That guy was in his warehouse. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. Walking to my booby trap. as your fault. <laughs> yeah. You, what are you going to do? Rest, uh, arrest Kevin from home alone. <laughs> uh, Michigan also was interesting in that Candyman and Freddy Krueger did pretty well compared to their national averages. So, uh, <laughs> Candyman, you know what? D- he probably won the Detroit vote. He's a black candidate, and sometimes people want to feel represented by... Can- That's not always, you know, obviously, but uh, maybe he was able to get that vote. Michigan has a very sizable black population. Maybe he was able to get the Wayne County. Yeah, you know? I do have uh, voter breakdowns by race. That's right. Here, okay. And it's very ex- it's it, very interesting. Let me take a look at that, because I want to check my own assumption there. Sure. Uh, black voters, I think I've been validated. Because although John Kramer still came in first, killing just it, man. because he fucking cleaned up with our, he had that youth vote, and in this weird inverse reality, uh, the youth vote came out hard here and pushed him into the nomination. So good for him. It'd be great. I think my favorite thing to come out of the racial breakdowns is how well Chucky does with black voters. I couldn't oh, tell you why. Yeah, he does do but better does, with black voters and than- And I, I think it's great. Uh, Minnesota, Candyman did well there. Candyman might just be a good Midwest, because how do you do in Ohio? Not good. Never mind. Ohio's weird, though. Uh, Ohio's very weird, because Black l- Phillip ran away with the vote. Ohio's Ohio. another cock. Or no, that that's a primary, but Black Phillip ran away with it. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, Freddie did tie for second, got his little home state advantage. I guess he's kind of a war in there. Came in, or was she third in her own home she state? She was third. Well, he was, um, uh, yeah, I got nothing. <laughs> he <laughs> came in second in his home state. Maybe drop out, Freddie. Uh, yeah. Black Phillip ran away with Ohio. I wonder why Ohio didn't go for Kramer that much. Interesting. New Hampshire was clearly a primary. Only three candidates were viable, uh, and Kramer came in first with Red and Black Phillip tying for second. Looks like Nevada was also a caucus. Oh, I'm sorry. Did I say New Hampshire was a primary? In this world, it's a caucus. North Carolina kind of spread its votes all around. 
Yeah, Toby got more votes than normal. I feel like Billy Loomis too doing a decent performance yeah. there, which is interesting because Billy Loomis is very West Coast to me. Very, I mean, for Scream sure, is like the most California <laughs> movie series. Yeah, it's interesting. Although uh, the sequel Scream Two, they never say it, but uh, ostensibly takes place in Ohio. Really? Her, her college oh. is like Ohio, interesting. which is weird. Uh, Pennsylvania, hmm, nothing too interesting here. Kramer ran away with it. Uh, Herbert West did pretty well there. Virginia, looks like that might have also been a caucus, but Red and Phillip tied for first. Yeah. Good for them. They were good candidates. They just didn't quite reach what they needed to uh, to beat kramer's monster campaign i know i almost wish i didn't have kramer on here i know he really ran away with it and wisconsin kramer won it and black phillip in second so yeah we have a little map i have I, the map i'm i probably put it in the video at sure the, by, uh, i anyway, love your, but... your coding so i'm assuming that they're looking at this right now if okay they're yeah at so the if, video. You, if i have the map up and if you're just listening we'll kind of explain uh yeah fucking kramer domination all over this map in like all regions yes uh He's any coast to coast candidate any state where the color is kind of lighter there's a couple of, you could see the kramer states are kind of utah lighter. and nebraska or um, no utah and it's because uh, they tied in those states and i did the flip i flipped a coin because that's how we do primaries here in this country yep <laughs> yeah so i think that's how like chucky won south dakota i was gonna oh wait chucky oh that orange one yeah oh hey you know what he won a state he did not many people want it. south carolina this year was joe biden's first state he ever won in a primary even though he had run in 88 and 2008 so this is Chucky's, uh, and Chucky's been around since 88. Mm-hmm. So I think this, that was Chucky's South Carolina. It just didn't go the same way for him right. <laughs> as it did for Joe. And then we have a Sam win in West Virginia. That was a coin flip also, I believe. Oh, interesting that he, his home state was Ohio, but I think a lot of, uh, there were a lot of Ohio people running around. So yeah. couldn't quite, but it does border Ohio. So maybe that's why I want it. Sure. And then we've got the Baba Duke up here. And is that, that, uh, the New rainbows. Hampshire? Yeah. In oh, like the corner. Oh, okay. I always mix up New Hampshire and Vermont. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, Kramer just owning everyone everywhere. It's ridiculous. Candyman won Alaska, Alaska mm-hmm. and New Mexico and Arkansas. Black, Virginia. Uh, or wait, no, sorry. Kentucky. Kentucky. Yes. Yep, got my K's mixed up. Uh, Beetlejuice won North Dakota and Georgia. Freddie did win. I wonder what's going on there. Freddie won I know, Louisiana. These, these little blocks. And Mississippi. Yeah. Yeah. Two neighboring states. Don't know why, but good for him. Yeah. And Herbert West won, in addition to Michigan, Nebraska, Montana, and Massachusetts. But otherwise, it is a Kramer domination. Red was able to win Maine, Washington, Iowa, and Missouri. And uh, Black Phillip had Oregon, Oklahoma, Ohio, and Virginia. So I just want to mention all of them because people are listening from their state. They want to sure. know. They want to know. Sure. Oh, Hawaii. Hawaii, Freddy Krueger. Freddy Krueger got you. And we mentioned Alaska, right? If we didn't mention you, John Kramer. John Kramer. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. All right. So this is fun. Gender breakdown. Gender breakdowns. There is a statistic I find very interesting. In yes. Here and so we have male, female, and other non-binary. Uh, so there is a clear difference between male and female voters and their yes, preferences. Yes, there is. Males went for John Kramer. He got 22% of the male vote, and second place was red with 10.4. So he dominated them. Yeah. Female voters did go for red. She mm-hmm. was the, the woman candidate who won the woman votes with 19% of the votes, but Kramer still did okay. He was 13% with female voters. So that that 6% gap just isn't going to be enough to make up for the giant 12% gap of male voters. Assuming that they voted equally, I'm ass- I'm assuming we had more male voters. Oh yeah, by far. Than female. Our demographics skew male. So that's also so our demographics skew young and male. Mm-hmm. Kramer cleaned up with that demo. Yeah. Makes sense. Yeah. I think it's interesting that uh, Black Phillip did much better with women than he did with men. Definitely. Which makes complete sense. And Black Phillip won the other vote. Yes, that's the statistic I'm fascinated by. It was like, by a pretty big margin, too, won the other. Here's, I'll I'll throw out a hypothesis there. Uh, Perhaps 
those voters are voting for the devil because of feeling oppressed by maybe some religious influences in their life. Well, I was even thinking like we, I mean, now especially because the the imagery of the the satanic temple is Baphomet. Baphomet oh. is is a representation of um male female like man nature human yeah. animal so there's those so i i was very fascinated by that it, made, it makes sense to and, me. and my comment is not to say that all religions are homophobic or transphobic or whatever but sometimes sometimes those demographics are Sa- satan is a friend to all satan's a friend to all so satan, yeah, yeah you might go for that I, I totally get it uh you know honey i'm sorry but i'm looking at this freddy krueger did much better with men than women yeah that's interesting. I'm a little surprised by that. I'm a little surprised because by I that. was gonna make the comment that the candidates that do well with women are ones where, in their films, there's a female protagonist, mm-hmm. or there's like a you know because we have Black Phillip is, um, what's her Thomason mm-hmm. and, and Mr. LaBelle and and Red clearly yeah, yeah and yeah. but that doesn't hold up once you factor in Freddy Krueger and even Beetlejuice does a little bit better with men. Yeah. At least. Because I kind of associate, he's like him and Lydia have yeah, like a weird. Yeah, for sure. Yeah. It is, it is weird. It's and that probably weird. sunk him. That probably killed his campaign. Race, we looked at a little bit. Mexican voters, uh, is this is this just Mexican or was it? This, I specified Mexican and Mexican-American. Okay. They went hard for, I mean, again, Kramer won first, but second place, Black Phillip, Candyman actually came in third among Mexican voters, uh, probably because his second movie takes place on Day of the uh, Dia de, de los Muertos. Oh, yeah. That sequel. So, That's right. You know, he he did have an outreach campaign sure, to those voters. Yeah. He, he paid attention. He listened to them. He talked to them, and they responded. White voters, like everyone else, went with Kramer, mm-hmm. uh, then went with Red, and uh, yep, everything else ca- and Black Phillip. What's all non-white? Does that mean all non-white? This is yes, because the because the breakdowns of race in this survey just it was like so many categories. I was just curious, like what if I just unclick, if I just uncheck white? Okay, so it does include black and Mexican. This is every every person, everyone who doesn't could, identify as yeah. White. Okay. This is like yeah. So all again, other categories. They went hard for John Kramer with twenty percent, but interesting among these voters is that their second place vo- candidate was sam from trick yeah. or treat hmm. I, that is so interesting i love finding these little standouts and trying to extrapolate a reason and not being able to come up with one because <laughs> yeah, how, sam, how the know. fuck yeah <laughs> cool and freddy krueger does very well with non-white he voters. was third among those voters so mm-hmm. interesting uh we we looked at age where really, again, John Kramer, candidate of the youth, Freddy Krueger, first place for the over 30, and uh, Herbert West and Black Phillip doing second place among the over 30. Also, youth candidates, Red, which makes sense, mm-hmm. and Black Phillip. So again, you keep hearing John Kramer, Red, and Black Phillip. They're, they were the serious well, candidates. Black Phillip does better with over 30. Oh, then under 30, but he's still third in under 30. So so that's something to consider. That is something to consider. He did solid among both groups. Yeah. Hey, this week's sponsor is First Leaf of Wine Delivery Service. Yeah. We have so much wine in our apartment now (laughs) because of First Leaf. All kinds of different varieties, too. And First Leaf delivers them with a little information card that tells you all about the that's the best you part. Got. I think that's so cool. Because, yeah, normally when I shop for wine, I just go based on the pictures. Oh, but yeah. But now I can actually choose stuff based on taste. Yeah, for real. And the way that it's curated is you take a little quiz when you sign up. So I signed up for us. So the wines we have are actually curated to me. That makes sense. They're all red. <laughs> there, Yeah, we have all <laughs> red wines. I am a big fan of red wine i think it's healthier for you too yeah marginally maybe Mm -hmm. (laughs) and you know what it's good to have a delivery service in this crazy time right now so you can have the essentials delivered to your doorstep (laughs) (laughs) exactly so go to tryfirstleaf.com slash dead meat for your six bottles of wine that's again tryfirstleaf.com slash dead meat you'll get six bottles of wine for 39.95 that's so much wine. That's so much wine. Yeah. It's and, it's a good way to stockpile wine. Yeah. In case of any quarantine. Yeah. Or if you want if you need to 
you know, lure someone into your wine cellar as it, that's an Edgar Allan Poe. Right? Oh, okay, yeah, sure. Uh, if you if you rate all six <laughs> bottles of wine, so you go in like you rate them, and if you don't like them, they'll send you something different. But if you go and rate all the wine from your first box, you get ten dollars off your second box. Six bottles of wine for thirty nine ninety five plus free shipping for a year. Get them now. Yeah, go get it. I do have. Just to kind of wrap this up and to inform us in our final decision on who our candidate is going to. Oh, but also just one more thing, because the last slide was uh, education. Sure. And I love that with the no high school degree, like Beetlejuice did way better with them than any college or grad school. Just like Chucky. I feel like they're both just like these crude, like, nah, fuck it's you. It's so great. Because <laughs> it also, it, I, in the category of no high school, it's just people who either are older and didn't graduate or they're still in high school and they're young oh that's true I didn't so it's yeah it's younger <laughs> voters okay right. yeah. Yeah, yeah 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 um so yeah i i, I took down a bunch of notes because people could submit comments with their surveys and i i love how seriously everyone took this yeah um so i'm gonna kind of go there's through. so many there's so many I'm, i'll go through them and just kind of pick some some good ones uh john Cr- so this is john kramer uh obviously got the most comments because he fucking ran away with this ran thing. away with it john kramer is a man who believes in the power of the individual to change themselves and by the way all these results are anonymous i'm sorry i can't like credit, credit. You, yeah, yeah. But that's you know that's part of the that's, system that's <laughs> the system he believes in punishment as a course to redemption kramer is staunchly against letting the guilty get a pass if they have the money to get around the courts Kramer's also a former civil engineer. Not only can he assure the public his infrastructure plans will work, but he also can physically show his knowledge through his contraptions. Kramer has experienced firsthand the problem of the ever-increasing price of health care and has fought against it. Kramer has created opportunities for his assistants, leading them to learning experiences and critical thinking development, which never would have happened without his help. At the end of the day, John Kramer believes in change and is willing to push those into redemption. That's probably the best summation of why good. this guy ran away with it and also because when all the criticism about how these candidates have murdered people he can at least obscure the issue yes he can at least he, say no well technically yeah exactly yeah um someone suggested his campaign slogan could be kramer 2020 let the games begin which Ooh. Rules. someone's saying his ideology is arbitrary i don't agree with that i think a con is that he is too rigid he's in his too ideology. black and white in his thinking mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I think that would be a con as well. He may need to compromise more to be better with politics. We'll see. Yeah. And he might get, yeah, I think that this other con points out he could uh, go too hard on like personal punishment for individuals instead of overall systemic oh, reform. Oh, yeah, that might be true. He, he might, might use the office in a as a personal uh, tool. Yeah, exactly. We I don't need spite. more of that. Exactly. Wow. Um, so Sam, some, some pros. He's he, cute and shaped like a friend. I trust him. I love that. That's a, uh, that's as good a reason to vote for anyone as he's baby. <laughs> he's baby. I think Sam is the definition of walk softly and carry a big stick, which Ooh. I think is best in foreign affairs and politics. Well, Teddy Roosevelt. Uh, fuck it. Why not have a kid in office? Yeah. He'll, he'll, he's fair as long as you follow the rules. Mm. Um, he's a, Sam is a traditionalist. He is. I worry he might be too much of a law and order candidate. He is. He's definitely a, you know, he's if, adorable, but if you follow his rules, you're good. But if you feel like straying a little, if that's not your thing, maybe Halloween's not your thing. He is not going to yeah. take kindly to that. Con Sam doesn't meet the age requirements for the Oval Office. I just laughed at how, like, yeah, that's fucking that's true. true. That's gonna, do, that's made gonna me hurt him. Really and uh, with Sam, we don't need another orange president. Ah. Oh God. Toby, <laughs> pros, uh, bead time. Bead time, I think, is what he should have. This ran made on. me laugh so hard. Toby caused all the events of the series without even being visible once. If that doesn't say Chad, then I don't know what. Does. <laughs> Absolute Chad, I agree. <laughs> it's got a track record of getting things done. Very true. Uh, cons, Toby's a ghost who won't be able to shake hands with his colleagues. Although he Might is... Might be a pro now. Yeah. That you can't shake That's hands. That's true. He won't be able to spread coronavirus. Yeah. yeah Although yeah. he does become a person in that last movie. We see his weird little naked legs, remember? Oh, that's weird. Yeah. Man. Yeah. He might have... Yeah. So, uh, Pinhead uh, pros, he already has his own cabinet of like representatives. That. So, that's mm-hmm. good. He LGBTQ plus positive. Very he will not true. judge your kink. He will not no, shame your kink. No, he will not kink shame you. Mm-hmm. Uh, 
He, if he's able to convince people that getting ripped apart with chains is cool and hot, he can definitely sell people on more ambitious proposals. That's true. Yeah. Um, he may, he'll also instantly secure the much undervalued kinky freak vote. Very, <laughs> very true. Uh, cons, he strong leader, but uh, worry that he might elect too many of his friends into positions of power. A little bit of nepotism. Yeah, and then just another kinky sex scandal waiting to happen. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Oh, yeah. I don't know if we care about that as much anymore. I don't know, man. Trump kind of blew that up, didn't he? I mean, may, it could just be a double standards thing. We'll see. It could be. That's why I'm like, may, I'm like, curious what happens next time there's a Democrat of, who has a weird sex thing. Yeah. I don't know. I mean, it kind of ended go. Wiener's career. It did. But that was before Trump. Uh, no, that was during the Trump era. Well, I no. mean, it was, you know, that one spread out. I was going to say yeah. that yeah, yeah. that's been, that's a thing. Yeah, you're right. Saga. It was, it originated pre-Trump, but also, yeah, I don't know. Uh, so Freddie pros, he's an icon is for the people, bitch. bitch. <laughs> he's just, just people's favorite. He's able to make dreams come true. I think he's kind of the nostalgia candidate. Good though. one liners though. And the deb- he could be a good VP. That's, that could be true. Yeah. Wouldn't you want to see him debate Mike Pence? Yes, absolutely. <laughs> oh my gosh. Just like Where's mother now, bitch? <laughs> Just like all the personality versus none of the personality. <laughs> oh man. He would probably make Mike Pence cry. I don't know if Mike Pence cries. That's true. Just dust. <laughs> <laughs> Let's see. Yeah, he he literally has a dreamers program. I laughed at that. Oh yeah. <laughs> He would fight for the dreamers. Absolutely. <laughs> he would fight for the uh, dreamers. Cons, Freddie will be involved in controversy surrounding his previous endeavors involving the children of Elm Street. That's Bear. right. He's too focused on small town America. Oh, but hey, electoral college. Yeah. So that, that could, could be. That could that he, that's, I think he could be a good VP. Yeah, uh, he might be a great Freddie, I, I laughed at how this was worded. Freddie Krueger would call me slurs. <laughs> like this person personally was yeah, like. Yeah, he would call me slurs, which like maybe. <laughs> Probably. Sorry, Freddie, but pedophilia is a killer at the ballot box. It even made a Republican lose in Alabama. Which is what I said. You literally we said that it. to yeah. me as I was going through the results, and I found that comment. I'm like, all right, yeah, yeah this is like, problem. It, yeah, it got Doug Jones in office. Yeah. Not makeup not, artist. Uh, yeah, Doug yeah. Jones. this is the horror podcast. I know, not that Doug Jones. Yeah. Uh, pros. Oh, <laughs> sorry, this is Candyman. Yes. Pros. More laws to fight racism. He won't let hate crime stand. Very true. His <gasps> slogan could be "Be, be my, my voter." voter. <laughs> Fuck yeah. Uh, he'll tackle tough issues like gentrification and institutional racism. Um, yeah, he. Yeah. He's like that. Basically, that's everyone's feedback. Is a uh, and a lot of people mention bees too. Like, yeah, he could help with the. It was interesting that. People for pro so for pros for Candyman, a lot of people put, oh, he he can just like create bees and he can help solve the bee problem. But then some cons, and it's interesting because I realize this is a divide in how people think that Candyman um, functions. Oh, so some cons were we already have a bee shortage. We don't need Candyman using all the bees. Wow. So are they? Is he making? Bees, bees from nothing or is he hoarding all the bees right is he part of the problem or is he creating bees out of nothing that's an interesting is he thing like breaking we're gonna have to press or... him on that question and if he doesn't answer we'll, the next, ve- we'll vet him the next uh the next reporter who he calls on you better ask that same question ask for a follow-up yeah also i like that the con is you have to call his name five times before he decides to come into work you got to make it as easy as possible to vote for the guy right you get you get the low effort voters who are like i'll say his name one, maybe twice but i'm not gonna sit there and say his name five times i just love Love. Candyman's hot, but bees are dying. <laughs> we can't <laughs> afford to use them as our main defense. Yeah. Um, okay, so Red, pros. All these other folks either don't have the same political experience as Miss Red. They don't have the same organizing power and support. They don't have uh, kick-ass dance skills and soundtracks. Very, very good. Mm, yeah. Um, but yeah, lots of she really good at organizing. She actually yeah. led a political revolution. She did, literally. Yeah. Like she had a successful revolution that at least covered California. Yeah. Um, con, I think this is a big con. Hmm. Her speaking voice <gasps> during debates and speeches. Oh, people hate it. Yeah. Oh, it's, no. it's, it's hard to listen to. Yeah. That's a big unfortunately like it doesn't matter if you're the best candidate in the world if you have like a weird speaking voice that's a big uh detriment. Uh, I'm red I read and I approve this, this message, message. <laughs> <laughs> the millionaires and billionaires <laughs> although you know Kramer's not far off I don't know if it's like that though man it's been too long I used to love doing my John Kramer voice 
I'm, nah, I don't even want to try. It's too long. It's been too long. Oh, no. Uh, <laughs> Herbert West. Pros. I uh, not want to do half measures. Very true. Uh, scientific advancements. Oh, yeah. Leading us to having a military advantage. Probably could come mm. up with a cure for coronavirus. I think if he really hunkered down, like if that was the thing he decided to get hyper focused on. Oh, yeah. He could cure every disease. I for like. sure. Although it would be very, done in very questionable ways. Yeah. Yeah. We could have like like tuskegee style problems Ooh, that's no good that is no good uh first of all we know that historically america will vote for a white man that's sure. true outside of cosmetic strong stance on an investment in the sciences and equal opportunity experimentation <laughs> my favorite is he's hot and i'm gay also <laughs> raising the dead would be interesting <laughs> so <we're> like yes <laughs> lots of people voting for candidates because they're hot i approve uh, the Babadook pros, a uh, very unifying candidate for the gays and also looks great in a top hat. Mm-hmm. Progressive LGBTQ rights. Oh, great stance on mental health care. Yes, exactly. Yes. The Babadook would be Babadook great for mental health. is an allegory for grief. So, yeah, I'm sure he would do uh, that. Because he ain't a Baba crook. <laughs> which, <What? laughs> I'm, not a, I'm not a Baba crook. <laughs> Oh, man. Yeah, uh, fancy top hat. Lots of people say got got top that, hat. That hat is working for some it's people, It's working, man. sure. Uh, cons, he is very abstract, I think. He's mm-hmm. an abstract concept. Is he real? I don't fucking know. Yeah, and I think some people might be like, listen, I heard that that movie was terrifying and good, and I went into it, and it just had a screaming, annoying kid. Oh, so. it's, oh we does artsy yeah. fuck thinks he's better than me. So I they, think he might be too pretentious for the-, the A little bit. The bit. salt of the earth American vote that <laughs> is like that mystifies us every election cycle. <laughs> Billy Loomis, pros. He always has a plan. So he's creative. He's suave. Kind of. He is a tra- he's an attractive white dude. Yeah. So for sure. Uh, incredible planner. That's true. Oh, and VP Stu. VP Stu. Billy's hot. Again, I love all. I love how horny people are. Yeah, yeah in y'all are horny, These man. votes. Um, he can run he has that i can run shit look he's good at that. lying which we all know is a trait of the u.s government <laughs> <laughs> he takes charge and he's a babe thanks for coming to my dad talk. <laughs> youthful charisma okay he's hot uh cons <laughs> billy loomis is terrible at picking running mates billy loomis is 17 years old and a fucking idiot <laughs> yeah fair yeah that's true uh yeah i'm trying to think of what else i mean i think he could get in some more years of community organizing and then maybe try again Mm -hmm. that might be good although uh, you know what in scream 3 we learn that he was just kind of a pawn in roman's plan who uh roman so is roman like the carl rove to billy loomis's george bush yeah or the well i guess carl yeah cheney carl Rove. i think more of a carl rove yeah rove because people know who cheney is and cheney was a puppet master but carl rove is even more of a stealth villain Of the last <laughs> decade. Uh, uh, that was that would be two decades ago, honey. Oh, fuck. Yep, sorry. Sorry about that. Uh, Chucky, <laughs> pros. Like most dumb Americans, my, vo- my vote is based on who I would most like to have a beer with <laughs> before he guts me. <laughs> <laughs> Tiffany is first lady. is too good to pass Ooh. up. Uh, also imagine VP Glenn slash Glenda. Hmm. And a Chucky has to be sitting on top of a Secret Service agent's shoulders to address the nation because he can't reach the podium. That's pretty fucking great. Uh, he's a family man who likes to teach his son hobbies. He could pro- he probably could run on uh, he is the most family-oriented yeah. candidate. I'm I, looking at I him. I think he could. And oh, that is the, the next point. He has strong family values and loves his transgender child, mm-hmm. uh, even though this was at a time when the community was not as accepted Seed as today. Seed of Chucky today. was 2005, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, that's right. Because he, yeah, he they they fight over the kid. They both love Glenn slash Glenda. Well, he wants him to be Glenn, right? But he loves him either way, right? Yeah, uh, he's a real. He was a real one all along. Like <laughs> <laughs> that's true. He was he was like supporting the the positions that weren't popular, but they were right. You know, remember we were like, oh, it's interesting. Chucky did really well with black voters. Oh, uh, maybe, this yeah, this came this, came this comment more, says uh, he will gain the African American vote because he loves them as he was excited to become a bro in Child's Play. 30. Finally, Chuck- Chucky's gonna be a bro. <laughs> yeah, Chucky's for the people. Uh, this other comment: He's the Tulsi Gabbard of this primary. <laughs> I think I said that. Up I top. think you did say that. <laughs> 
cons. Chucky can't see over the Oval Office desk. Fair. Fair. Uh, Chucky couldn't get elected after saying this is a soundbite for all the attack ads. Yep. I have a date with a six-year-old boy. That's right. That's that it. just sank his campaign. That'll tank your campaign. Oh, shit. Uh, the, uh, the gin pros vote for me or you'll wish you did. I love that <laughs> as a slogan. Good slogan. He'll do exactly what his country wants, just not exactly. That's fair. <laughs> He's good at finding loopholes and stuff. Mm. Um Cons, yeah, the gin wants to destroy humanity. Yeah. I, I just think he's not going to be reliable. I think he's literally the politician that is going to say one thing and then do the he other. He is literally a two-faced politician. He's the ultimate flip-flopper. Because he would come to the podium looking like... Uh, uh, Andrew Divoff, yeah. Looking like sex, sexy Andrew Divoff, but then there would be someone would have like some cell phone video footage of him looking like the gin, yeah. and they'd leak it online, and that's the end of him. And that's it. Yeah. Um, Annie Wilkes, pros, uh, she has a strong desire to fix things that she doesn't like. Mm -hmm. uh, no nonsense, <laughs> middle class sensibilities. Oh, I don't know why my phone just. Oh, yeah, started. she's definitely. Yeah, I forget what state that takes place. I mean, place she's in, a but... Stephen King so, yeah, middle that means class. Middle class, rural. <laughs> yeah, I think that might be in Colorado, actually. Oh, yeah. Misery. I could be wrong. I forget. I need to read that. Uh, one again. Time for a woman president. Okay. Uh, she is essentially Amy Klobuchar, but crazier, Ooh, yeah. <laughs> which I can get down with. Uh, backwoods oh. living, gun shooting, man trap, and good old American girl. She, she would be able to w maybe win over some single issue gun voters who haven't yeah. voted Democrat in decades. They might look she at Amy Klobuchar. She could Wilkes. be a valuable VP. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Uh, Annie up, boys. <laughs> Is that her slogan? That's what someone. I think that could be a good slogan. Yeah, Annie up, boys. Yeah. Um, cons. She might get. A, she's like a Herbert West, where she might just get fixated on individuals. And yeah, that's no good. Mm -hmm. If she like uh, gets real into a head of state of another nation, that's that's a problem. It's not, not good. Uh, Black Phillip pros. Uh, obviously, we want to all live deliciously. Yeah. He would look super cute in a little presidential tie. Agree. Oh, yeah. God had his time in the White House. Maybe the goat can fix our country. Again, highly agree. I when, probably would when vote. was God in the White House? I mean, for a long time. I mean, I think still an atheist would not win the White House. Maybe. I don't know. I think it's a tough. One. I think that's a tough one. But I think religion, maybe not as much anymore, but for years has... it's looking better than it did 10 years ago yeah i mean even god like jfk being a catholic was crazy that was crazy so satan's turn now <laughs> he's definitely passionate about women's rights and wants everyone to travel eat well and live well overall uh motivates women to be the best they can be sure and he yeah offers the only candidate to offer a progressive platform that includes women as part of the collective discourse uh, I love this. Good orator, by which I mean from his voice, you can tell he fucks. <laughs> uh, oh, rural populations. Yeah. Yeah. Because he won Virginia, which I thought was kind of interesting. Oh, OK. Which is, I just is Virginia rural. No, I think of it as being rural for some reason. No, I mean the western part, but it's got a lot of uh, college mm. towns. Mm, yeah. Mm -hmm. Cons, Black Phillip uh, would not be able to separate church and state. Oh, he, also Virginia has like is D.C. also the northern part. True. Like basically. Arlington and stuff. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but yes, he would not separate because church and yeah, state. Uh, he is the church of Satan. <laughs> 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 copyright. That is a copyright. Like there's the there's the satanic temple and the church of Satan and they don't like each other. Oh, that's right. Uh, <laughs> Mr. LaVale pros. Uh, he would help with immigration and unemployment by just asking them to play his games. Remember the, the family in Ready or Not, they're an immigrant family. And he's like, I'll help you out. Yeah, they're like... They were immigrants a, a while ago. I know. <laughs> like Trump's grandpa was an immigrant, so. Tag, yes, yeah. yes. <laughs> uh, we're, all, we're all from immigrant families. That's true. Well, unless not all you, of us. Uh, yeah, not all Natives. of us. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> he could have killed Grace, but he didn't, which is pretty cool of him. Sure. It was pretty chill. <laughs> He's good at manipulating rich idiots, and that's what most politicians are, sure. He has a sense of moral restitution that many others don't have. He puts a unique focus on pandering to, but ultimately torturing the upper class, while his true allegiance seems to be with the working class. I think that is why I, I kind of fucking love Mr. LaVale. Because hmm. he gives her, again, the little nod, yeah. which we told Radio Silence was the best shit. <laughs> and, and just my favorite little touch. Because I think he is a bit of a wink-wink, like, fuck the rich. Um... 
He believes that cheaters should inevitably lose in the end and is not interested in deals or bribes. Um, cons, he has shown himself to literally not be there for his constituents. Oh, yeah. And he may be in the pocket of lobbyists. Oh, he's definitely. Big big game. Not yeah. like big game, like hunting, but yeah. like big board game. Although if he might be the, you know, if any candidate's going to have, oh, scandalous photos of they went big game hunting and here's them with like a tiger and oh, shit. That's going to be LaVeil LaVeil, LaVeil, for yep. sure. Mm-hmm. Beetlejuice, uh, pros, he's the ghost of the most. Uh, he's <laughs> Outside of trying to marry a teenager, he didn't really do much harm. <laughs> Best dressed, 100%. Um, he never talks about his plans so people can't criticize him. Mm. <laughs> Big brain. Just don't talk <laughs> about your plans and no one can poke holes in him. Uh, he's funny. People like him on Twitter. Charismatic. Um, and then uh, this is the the quote from the movie. The, While well, I attended Juilliard, lived through the Black Plague, and had a pretty good time during that, he's seen The Exorcist about 167 times, and it keeps getting funnier every single time you've seen it, not to mention the fact that you're talking about a dead guy. Now what do you think? Do you think he's qualified? <laughs> I, for, I saw a bunch of people submit that. I was like, oh, yeah, that's just from the fucking movie. That's funny, yeah. Yeah. Uh, cons, this is the la- my very last note. Uh, just to wrap this up, Beetlejuice is a pedophile. He is. Also, hygiene issues. Yeah, he's gross. He's fucking gross. He's going to be shaking hands. He's going to, like, you know, hawk a loogie and, like, yeah. shake hands with I'm people. I'm not voting for that guy. Sorry. We need some dignity in the Oval Office. Sure. We can't have this fucker representing our nation. That's no. disgusting. We're better than that. Who's our candidate, hon? <laughs> Listen, I think... I mean, John Kramer ran away with this shit. Yes, John Kramer has a clear plurality. It is not that close. And he also does well among every region. He does well among so many states. I worry, though, that among older voters and just the general populace outside of this poll, that people will look at John Kramer and just associate they'll associate him with Saw rightfully they're his movies mm-hmm. and they don't want to vote for the the newfangled torture porn president do you mm-hmm. know what I mean the association with torture porn could be a negative yeah so there's that I I think this is tough I mean my personal choice is Black Phillip obviously um, he has but, a really good speaking voice mm-hmm. um, he is a goat <laughs> so that's kind of weird i don't know if, if there are any it might be a loophole thing where like technically an animal could be president because we've never had to make that rule before because there's been no reason to so what are you I, thinking i think we have to go with kramer because I he think, yeah. he wins every racial demographic he's he was first place yeah. for black voters mexican voters white voters non-white voters he won them all Mm -hmm. the only demo he he does not win is the over 30 and while they are reliable voters in this world (laughs) we have a lot more under 30 voters Mm -hmm. so uh yeah i think i think the over 30 voters too are the ones who you can count on more so to just vote for whoever the candidate is gonna be make that argument uh because they went out hard for freddie Freddie didn't come close to the nomination, so hopefully they can yeah. just just. Uh, I think Freddie will do the right thing and really campaign hard for Kramer. Mm-hmm. And he can he can campaign while he sleeps too. Or yeah, while you sleep, he can do ads in your dreams. Yeah, there's no uh, uh, FEC rules about that, mm-hmm. so he can just run around that. Uh, but yeah, Kramer won voters with no high school degree, some college, grad school. He he won every demo. And uh, I think red VP, maybe I think that would be the best conciliatory action is because she was uh, clear second place. You yeah. know, she was 13 to his 19 and uh, it's a diverse ticket. Yeah. You have a woman of color as your running mate and he's an old man. Mm-hmm. So it, he needs to have someone who's competent and ready to take the reins day one. If something happens to him, he does have cancer. He does have cancer. <laughs> like we, yeah. That is a pretty, I'm surprised. No, no one, one talked about that. I'm surprised. No, or at least I didn't see anyone put that as a con. Like he has terminal cancer. That's true. He is literally on borrowed time, Yeah. but that's why you go with red, who is a proven community organizer. Yeah. Very effective. Uh, she can help keep him big picture. Mm-hmm. And she's a, a younger candidate, so she can uh, carry the torch for a long way after that. I think our winning ticket here is John Kramer with Red as VP. Yeah. And if you look at the states that those two combined won, yeah. that's most of the country. We're going. We're taking the White House. Although, I mean, I am a little scared that neither of them won Michigan or Ohio. That is... See, this is... But Kramer won Florida and Wisconsin, so... 
What Texas? He won Texas. Okay. Okay. Yes. So that I think that's I think that's ticket. I think that's it. Yeah. Kramer red. I like it. It even sounds good. President Kramer. And also, not as many people watch the VP debates, so maybe the voice thing won't be as damaging Fair. for Red. Although both yeah, both of them together talking is gonna be It's funny. so much. It's it's they might we'd have to do some PR stuff with them to get them to like loosen up a little bit. Mm. They gotta be, you know, making jokes and and having fun with their constituents. They gotta be so yeah. that's, that's my c- concern with this ticket. Is that's fair. I don't know if either of them are super charismatic. I worry that they would be too serious. Kramer has a little bit of charisma he can to him. Dry humor. Yeah, and the second movie is pretty funny when he's fucking with Wahlberg. Sure. You know, he's smiling, he's having a good time. And then we can do like how Mayor Pete had the hey, hey. and then Red can have her own little dance because she dances. Oh yeah, and we can have a dumb dance too. Okay, yeah, that'll be fun. I like it. We can figure out ways to make the ticket more fun. I think that'll be. Uh, I think they're gonna bring in Freddie for that. Yeah, he'll be their consultant for that. I like it, and he he can really do that outreach to the older voters who went hard for him. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's so funny that we have to have like the the fun. The fun guy to do the older photo. I know that's weird. It makes no sense. <laughs> this makes no fucking sense. Whatever. I, I would it. love to do this again in four years. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yeah, this was a lot of fun. Yeah. And I think we have a solid ticket here. Yeah. Thank you, everyone, for voting. Mm-hmm. So much data. I was so excited. You did good not coughing. I'm proud of you. Thank you. Yeah. I've been dying this whole time. Yeah. Um, I bet. But yeah, the tea really helped, actually. I, I hope that you guys had as much fun listening to us as I did talking about it. Yeah, this, is my- this was the perfect episode for right now where I didn't have to talk as much. Yeah. I had a lot of fun. I think next week we're going to review The Hunt because... Yeah. So at first we were like, shit, we can't do that anymore because we can't, can't go, go to the, the movie, movie theater. theater. But... Blumhouse is releasing a bunch of stuff online early. Was it? I saw Universal. Is it? Blum, is it like Blumhouse's? It's like Universal. It, yeah, releases? Invisible Man. Okay. And The Hunt. And yeah. And I forget what else. I only saw those two, but there's probably more. So we're we're gonna review The Hunt. All right, but I uh, hope you had fun. I did. I hope you did. Chelsea. I had a lot of fun. Cool. It's good to be back. And yeah, uh, be safe out there. Yeah, stay inside. Don't downplay this. Like, don't. Yeah, if. Here's the thing with, with and the, I'm being dead serious right now. Like, if you feel like you're overreacting, you're not. It's fine. And if you feel like, if in a couple months, this kind of, you know, God willing, I'm, I'm worried it's going to get a lot worse. But if it if it doesn't, and it seems like this was all a big deal for nothing, we all did the right thing. Yeah. All right. Be safe, everybody. Yeah. yeah. And uh, we'll see you next week. Until then, I'm James. I'm Chelsea. This has been the Dead Meat Podcast. Yeah.